afternoon to everyone and thank you for joining this uh, webinar. My name is uh, Carlos Callejero and uh, I am uh, one of the one of the founders of uh, Sensor Wave and Digital Animals. Uh, we are really grateful no, to taking part in this uh, uh, IOF 2020 project because it has given us the, the chance, the opportunity to, to develop products and services a bit further in order to uh, complete uh, our vision, which is not just being able to, to provide tools to, to, to monitor the livestock farms, but also uh, developing the technology together with uh, other partners in order to uh, transmit and share all this data, all this information to the final consumer. So we are really, really happy taking part of this project and having the, uh, the, the partners that, that we have. Uh, in this project, uh, we, we count with uh, um, work with the knowledge of the University of Córdoba. Uh, Professor Paco Maroto will present um, the vision uh, about how digitalization is going to provide uh, new possibilities you know, for the traceability, but also, and which is more important, how uh, data can add value to the, to the whole chain. And um, we also have in the project uh, as a partner to Agriculus, an Italian uh, company that provides with a really powerful platform to monitor uh, crops. And um, also with uh, Natrus, which is a beef uh, company that sells um, high quality premium Angus uh, beef. Um, so uh, let's uh, start with uh, uh, Paco's presentation. Paco, I, I'm gonna give you the, the word. Uh, we are really happy having you here and really looking forward to, to, um, to hear and to, to know a bit more about the digitalization. So the, the, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carlos. I will start. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Paco Maroto. I am an assistant professor uh, at the Department of Animal Production here at the University of Córdoba in southern Spain. And I'm gonna try to, to introduce the, the main topic of the, of the webinar, which is the digitalization of the beef value chain. As everyone knows in this uh, meeting, agriculture digitalization is now a hot topic in, in worldwide, but especially in Europe. Um, as an example, you can see that uh, under the H2020 uh, framework, uh, societal, societal Challenges uh, 2. Uh, we have uh, 19 projects focused on agriculture digitalization, which means a total budget or almost uh, 200 million euros. This is uh, an indicator or the, of the high importance of this topic for the European Commission. Uh, of course, as, as you all know, uh, IOF 2020 is one of these uh, projects probably the best one, uh, you can share the opinion with me. Um, and we are part of, of uh, IOF 2020. Uh, if we talk about uh, specifically about livestock farming digitalization, uh, as you know, the key word is probably uh, precision livestock farming. That was defined by the Professor Bergman in Leuven at uh, the management of livestock farming by the continuous, automated, and real-time monitoring of production, reproduction, health, and welfare of livestock. Uh, nowadays, PLF is, is a consolidated uh, term and is used in, in many situations. But is, if you look at the solutions in the market and even at the solutions in research, you can find that most of the current solutions are focused on dairy farming, pigs and poultry. Why? Because these are the main uh, sectors of the of like livestock uh, of livestock worldwide and also because this intensive uh, production system 
have uh, more uh, money to invest in these kind of, of technologies. But uh, you can question, and this was uh, our question, uh, what about uh, ranch land systems? In our opinion, uh, ranch, ranch land systems are also very important in Europe. And in the specific case of beef cattle sector, uh, as you can see, EU is a major producer of beef and, and beef. But most importantly, uh, beef sector provides uh, employment and contributes to territorial vitality, especially in those uh, regions of Europe which are more marginal or vulnerable, like uh, very rural areas or Mediterranean uh, countries. Beef cattle is also important because it provides uh, environmental goods, uh, for example, biodiversity conservation through the use of uh, grasslands. And uh, many of the products we obtain from um, beef are considered at European level at high quality products. Some of them are even protected by UE uh, schemes. Despite this uh, importance of beef in, in Europe, it is now facing uh, several challenges. Of course, uh, profitability problems, because uh, as, as other uh, sectors, but uh, probably most important in extensive production. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the demand of meat is changing. People probably will, uh, will demand in Europe less meat, but uh, of higher quality. And you can see now this uh, famous documentary of uh, Sacred Cow that is talking about these, these topics. And uh, we also have an increased competition due, due to international trade agreements of the European Com uh, Community Commission, sorry, with other countries such as Argentina, the US, where they can produce uh, beef at a lower price. And probably the, another important challenge is climate change. On one side, because uh, cows are usually blamed for climate, climate, change, climate change, but also because uh, these beef productions on extensive systems need to adapt to climate, to climate change. So you can uh, ask yourself, uh, does EU beef cattle sector have a future? In our, in our opinion, yes, it has a bright future, but we need to, to improve some aspects. In our opinion, the most important aspects are uh, we, that we need to increase efficiency, production efficiency, which at the same time means to reduce the environmental footprint of beef production. And on the other hand, uh, we need to increase uh, traceability. <clears throat> Regarding efficiency, uh, we believe that European beef cattle sector should be a world reference in terms of production efficiency and environmental footprint. We don't have in Europe a lot of land like uh, other countries where we can produce uh, a lot of uh, animals uh, on the basis of grass. So we have to be very uh, efficient producing beef in our conditions with our uh, resources. And all we can make this only uh, on the basis of the best uh, practices available. And in our opinion, these practices, if, if farmers uh, uh, practice uh, these this best uh, ways of production, they should be rewarded uh, for the market or, or for the common agricultural uh, policy or for both. In terms of uh, traceability, uh, as you know, Europe already have the, has the highest traceability standards in the world, but the, we believe that we need to continue like that or even we need to, to improve, to enhance these traceability systems. How? Well, we need to, to communicate uh, every best practice we have in our farms. We need to communicate them to, to end consumers, especially in the case of high quality products. Uh, and, and this is uh, needed because we need to differentiate these this, uh, products in the market in comparison with these other uh, international options. This is uh, our opinion for, for some years now. 
uh, we realize that this, it, is, uh, it is not only our opinion, it's uh, also the opinion of the European Commission, probably. As you can see in the EU Green Deal and in the Fund to Fork strategy, which are focused on most of these uh, topics and, and are uh, aiming at uh, us to work in this uh, direction. So, in this context, uh, we believe that digitalization can provide tools to farmers or to other stakeholders in the, in the beef cattle sector to increase efficiency and traceability at the same time. Uh, of course, uh, PLF tools will not be the only solution, but uh, we, we believe that they can provide, a, we can play a, a major role in, this, in these problems. And this is exactly the starting point of this uh, Share Beef project that we are presenting uh, today. Uh, in our proposal to IOF 2020 uh, consortium during the second open call, we, we analyzed the uh, beef cattle uh, value chain and we realized that there, there are a lot of uh, stakeholders participating in the, in the chain with different roles, not, uh, not in every chain with you find all the stakeholders, but in, uh, to conclude, it's is, is a complex system. And we as a consortium, the companies and the university participating in this consortium, uh, had in, uh, in that moment some PLF or some uh, precision technologies for some um, steps of the, of the value chain of the value chain. Uh, we have uh, solutions for the cow cow farm. We have solutions for the feedlot on different uh, technology readiness levels. And the other partner, Agricolus, had uh, solutions for feed production and grass production. But what we lacked in, in that moment was uh, data integration, um, uh, data sharing between the different uh, partners, different stakeholders of the, of the value chain. And this was uh, our proposal to, to add uh, uh, data to every step uh, of this uh, value chain and to move data among the different uh, stakeholders with a philosophy, if you want, of, of shared value. And uh, shared value uh, sometimes sounds like uh, a bit uh, idealistic, but uh, I like this definition of the Harvard Business Review that says that shared value is not a social responsibility, philanthropy, or sustainability, but a new way to achieve economic success. Uh, in, the, in the world today, things are very complex. Um, if we share uh, data and if we share experience, we believe that we can benefit uh, each other. Of course, there are some data that are more uh, sensitive than others, but uh, there are a lot of information we can share and, and it's good for, for, for everyone. And it's, this is, it was the principle of uh, our proposal to, to IOF 2020 that was uh, successful and becomes uh, the project Share Beef. Of course, when we start working, we, we face it, uh, a number of challenges. And the first uh, challenge was uh, data integration. We found that we had a lot of uh, data sources, uh, data coming from the crop, the data coming from the animal, from the slaughterhouse, etc. And we need a, a common framework to manage this, this data. And in fact, the first uh, deliverable of, of this project was a data model for the management of uh, animal information. And it was made on the basis of fiber components and fiber formats. We were lucky to be in IOF 2020 because fiber was also a partner of, of IOF 2020 what it is was a, a good opportunity to collaborate in this and, and, other, and other topics. And this was uh, our approach for most of the project. We faced, uh, faced uh, several uh, technical or social adoption problems. 
and we try at least to, to propose uh, one or several solutions for every challenge. For example, a huge challenge for us is data coverage in, in rural areas. We are not working in barns where we can place a Wi-Fi system or, or whatever. We, we need to, to collect data from the fields and from the animals so we we need to move to low power wide area networks and we have worked with with several types of of these uh, networks networks on the other hand uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, test beds in different uh, countries and some in these extensive production systems have uh, several uh, differences between countries and between uh, types of, of uh, livestock so uh, we need to adapt some hardware components or some software components of the initial solution to these different uh, uh, test beds on the other hand uh, always with uh, plf but probably most importantly in in ranch land systems uh, we found the the problem of technology adoption to solve this or, or to try to solve this we have maintained uh, a focus on low-cost sensors and uh, on the other hand uh, on dss uh, decision support systems associated to these uh, sensors and to this data it's not only about data it's uh, about decision we try to to maintain this focus in the whole project Another important uh, challenge of this uh, chair beef project is the possible reluctance of some stakeholders to share the data. Our proposal to this challenge was a customizable uh, data sharing model in which every stakeholder uh, gives data to receive data. So and they establish their own uh, agreements of, of, uh, about which data I give and which data I receive in, in, in opposite. So um, it's true that we have worked uh, mostly on cooperatives and, and this can be uh, easier in, in, that, in that, uh, those production systems. But we, we believe that the, the fact that the model is uh, customizable is, is a good starting point to, to be adopted. And regarding data integrity, we incorporate blockchain solutions into, into the project. Then, as you all know, the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, arrives and all of us need, needed to, to adapt to this new situation and this is why we are talking through the computer um, and as you uh, also know the pandemic was especially hard uh, uh, for italy and spain which are uh, two of the of the main countries participating in in shared beef it uh, highly affected uh, beef producers beef farmers because in some in most places uh, high quality beef, pro beef products are mostly consumed uh, at restaurants and restaurants were uh, closed during uh, lockdown but at the same time we found that uh, household consumption of some of these uh, products increased and most time this uh, new consumption was uh, associated to online sales so uh, we saw an opportunity on that uh, and we we were lucky to have an, ext an extension of Sherbet project for three months to incorporate uh, online sales in the in the project and we also include uh, land production which is uh, also an extensive production in most Mediterranean uh, countries. So uh, we see online sales uh, as an opportunity to provide this, all this digital traceability data we were uh, gathering in the project directly to consumer and, and to, to make them more aware of, of the production system. 
Now we we are finishing the the project and we are happy that we we are in in two of the farms participating in the project. Uh, we are selling the first uh, animals, the first lambs in this case, with the digital traceability system directly by the by the internet. Uh, today, in fact, the uh, sheep farmer told us that he's uh, he's uh, producing 25 uh, lambs for these Christmas uh, parties to be sold uh, online. And of course, all, all, all these lands will have a, a lot of uh, digital and sensor data associated uh, to them, which consumer will access through this uh, QR code. Uh, another important aspect for, for us, especially for Mediterranean countries, uh, PLF devices uh, and this uh, digital accessibility system we are proposing in, in Sherbif uh, are an opportunity to valorize uh, traditional practices, uh, especially to, to be valorized for consumers. And these uh, images are an example of uh, transhumance, which is uh, moving animals to new pastures in, in summer which is a very traditional uh, practice in Southern Europe. And it has a, a lot of sense from the environmental point of view, but it's very difficult in terms of labor and in terms of uh, effort. But uh, if we can use uh, uh, digital data to show this to, to consumers, maybe we can get a, a higher valorization from, from them for these uh, farms and an uh, uh, easier way to, to sell these products in, in the market. Just to, to finalize my, my talk, uh, I would like to say that uh, for us, uh, being a use case of uh, IOF 2020 has been a, a great opportunity uh, for several things. First, to test uh, tools and solution, solutions at European scale. Uh, to share knowledge and experience with uh, European experts, the coordinators and Baganirgen uh, and other colleagues from different universities and companies, um, and also to showcase uh, our products and our solutions at European uh, level. And we believe that we have made uh, some a significant advance in technology development and also in, in data integration, including important aspects like uh, data integrity, privacy, and, and security. Of course, we still have a, a, a lot of uh, things to do, but uh, IOF 2020 ha has been a um, powerful tool to, to advance in the last uh, two years. And this is all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paco. As always, we've learned uh, a lot. I think, um, as you said, uh, this project uh, has given us the you know, chance to go very, very quickly. We had all different uh, backgrounds, but uh, having this, uh, this project and this uh, 21 months, uh, um, and also the, the, the pandemic, uh, gave us the, the motivation you know, to, to move forward, as you said. There is a lot, there are still a lot of things uh, pending, no, to to be done. But indeed, I think uh, we have all made a very very good uh, progress. Paco, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you a lot. And now I'm gonna give the the word to Anna. She is the project manager, <laughs> and she is also our vet. So Anna, you, you know this project uh, much more than I, so now mm -hmm. you have the word to explain uh, your, no, your vision about uh, what has been done during the, the um, uh, project, no, during the use case in these uh, 20, 21 months. Okay, thank you everyone for, for joining us today. Um, and yes, I will speak a bit of results uh, we are obtaining from the project. 
Uh, in line with the introduction of, uh, of Paco Maroto. So let me see if this is presenting. Okay, so um, uh, in, this is, in this presentation, I will talk uh, the most relevant things that are two developments the decision support uh, system, some examples that we can. We can consider and the traceability success, how we implement this as out of the digitalization of the uh, food chain. Uh, as uh, well, uh, the partners from from the from our use case is Agricolus Natural Center with Agnesium, but I would like to mention that this use case have uh, seven and now nine uh, deployment deployment system parts so test beds. So we deploy many different technology in, in all the, the, the test beds and uh, we will have an example of this test bed thanks to Javier that will present later her, his user experience on, on the project and on the technology we implement there from this use case. Um, about the, the problematic that we face in the, in the project is true that uh, the technology can use to the farms are not is not very very common, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But also we wanted to uh, finish this uh, paperwork that uh, is very very uh, common in a, in a, for the farm management. So uh, we want to make easy the system at the farms that will improve the 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 management and also improve uh, many ways of sustainability somehow and even um, um, succeed on the on the gender uh, in the farm work. So once we get this consum cons cons consumer confidence and farm management well, we can say that it's thanks to many things and uh, in our solution over overview, what we use <coughs> is that uh, thanks to the, the model that is through blockchain, the service and the farm can, uh, can get uh, information from the animals on the apps that the sensors are provided. So let, we have sensors for animal welfare, animal health, and that I will explain now, sensors for crops and sensors for transport, Board that are directly uh, uh, sending data to the platform, to our cloud, and the server translates it in an in, in original, um, not changeable uh, information from the use case. <coughs> For example, one of these data that we, that we feed our system is the GPS location. The GPS location is a solution for, in this case, for breeders because it's important in this case that the breeders know uh, the location of the animals for uh, improving the uh, reduced reduction of the well use, reduction of the animal losses, and reduction of some health problems that can be according to the uh, reproduction, uh, reproductive uh, performance. For example, if we detect calving. Uh, and the, uh, the cows are far away, so or it will detect heat. It, it will be much more uh, useful for, for the farmer. The solution is uh, through cloud storage and uh, algorithm that we are, <coughs> uh, some we have developed and some we are in development. Then um, the low cost solution, it was very important because um, the GPS technology wastes a lot of, energy, of battery and also is a, a technology that, that is not cheap as itself uh, for putting in a cow that has to be uh, with a long durable battery. So it was we implement thanks to the project also and as a result is that we implement also a low cost IoT based system. In this case, the collar connects to an ER tag that are Bluetooth ear tags. And with these uh, Bluetooth ear tags, we can connect with one collar, connect much more ear tags, and much more animals are connected. And again, the, the, the goals of this solution is the same as the collar, but with additional parts of that is a, a, a much more a less expensive. The another tool that we are using in this use case 
is um, what we can say for health, use for health monitoring. This is a solution for fatteners. In the case of the of the uh, well, breeding uh, beef systems, you have the, the, the farms, uh, the, the breeders that are with the uh, little calves, and then you go to the fattening or the field lot where the cows must uh, be much more productive in a way and also without losing the, the animal welfare of the animal. And it's true that this uh, is indoors, so you have to come to check much more details about uh, gases, etc. But in this case, what we wanted to focus is to know if the animal is growing accordingly. Accordingly as his age and at the efficient uh, food that we are giving like this, we also uh, reduce the, the pollution that we can cause of these of these parts of the of the growing up of the cow that is normally very um, very uh, polluted in, in terms of uh, CO2 or NO2. And for this, we we implement the smart scale that is developed so thanks to the use case. And um, this smart scale is also used cloud solution and in artificial intelligence algorithm. And what it does is that the group optimization, okay, because we need to know if the group of our animals that we have in the field are growing accordingly. So we uh, the goals were the group of optimization the optimal slaughter way that every animal that goes to slaughter is a big enough, grows in a, in a, health condi in a proper health condition, etc. This is normally normal work on, on management that the farmer knows and do, but through an automatic scale it's much more comfortable to, to have this data automatically. And also what we want to do is early detection of welfare problems. In this case, the scale um, has also a um, uh, measuring the drink, the, the water. So we also know uh, if, the water, if the cow is drinking appropriately to, to the age or if uh, that's stressful or whatever, we also would know the uh, if the cow is stressed and is drinking more water or less water. The third tool or the fourth tool that we can mention it here is the integration. Okay, we want, the system is ready for using different tools at different stages of the animal breeding, but also is integrating, is integrating another kind of a monitoring, a crop monitoring. It's very important because in a farm, normally you produce the food that your animal sit. So like this, we close the system. Um, the CIRVAF, the CIRVAF includes in, with the agricultural technology and another technology that we implement, the crop monitoring. And for example, here we can see the NVDI um, uh, uh, analysis from the, from the land of, the, uh, of a farm. So we see quite clear in July 2019 is uh, not as uh, green as uh, it is in April, for example. So we can do a calculation of when to grass land, when to, uh, if you, in case that you have red grass or corn, when to crop these um, vegetables, etc. And also is an additional tool that the that the farmer can use and is integrated. So the the system is integrating the tools that is very important in the food chain because normally um, this is not very common if, uh, passing in the in the in the beef systems or in the also in the daily cattle either. So in the cattle uh, monitoring for BLF. And um, as a system support system, uh, we have to see the, the first the needs, as Paco already told you, the needs of the, of the farmer, no? and the challenges that we had to front, like knowing how the, these needs are, and then um, uh, applying for them. So, for example, when we install the scale, what is the decision that the farmer has to do as, uh, from our scale? So in this case, is knowing when if an animal is not growing accordingly, 
that the, the, the system has to send an alarm. And it's what we do, uh, well, this is an exemplification from one animal, how he grows in the in, in, in this time, no? from, the, from October to December. And so these animals were growing very appropriately, actually. So he didn't have any, but for example, in, if there is a period like this from, the, from November that is not growing a one kilogram per day, that is a media or something, the, the system will notify the farmer that the animal is not growing appropriately. And here is expressed um, the, um, the weight uh, the, uh, from daily weight and also the uh, kilograms that the animal is, is gaining in, the, in comparison with the animals from the same lot. The, another decision that we could do is that uh, um, we saw that the system can be applied to other species. And in this in this say in this extent, we see um, that the sheep and lambs uh, are very very also um, as a market that these uh, kind of tools can be very useful. So what we did is to 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 use the application of the ER tag and to do another casing that you can see here in this video of these beautiful lambs that uh, the collar is much more smaller. So this collar is connected to the, the collar on the, on the sheep. And like this, the, the animal is also monitored because we know the location. Well, the, the little lambs are not normally going away from the mom. So also we know, know the location. And what we did also, and this is an experimentation, is knowing the, um, the um, how the, the calf is re getting relation with the man. So in this case, if the lamb is going very far away or something from the man, normally means a, some a distortion in the, in the normal feeding, in the, the lamb is not healthy, the man has some pathology or some mastitis, mastitis, for example. So this is very necessary to see. So here in this graphic, what we can see is the, um, there is a, the number of collars that we have applied for a number of animals and there is one that in this case is the 19, uh, uh, 91.7 that is getting much more uh, records than the rest. So this means this lamp is the lamp that is the, the song, let's say, of, of the of the cow. So, so the cow that has a collar is connected to the lamp. If, in, if we know this lamp is connected to this cow and the, gra the, the lectures are, or the seeing points of the, of, the, of the GPS are not so common as this, and we have, for example, uh, the numbers of another, we would have um, a problem in this in this relation and we would have to check and go to the grassland and see if this animal is okay. And um, as, as I say, this, this is still an experimentation and we are getting more and more results from this um, calf-man relationship. <clears throat> Regarding the trustability for the beef chain, what uh, we were waiting from this use case is to provide this QR and that is a QR that um, I would like you to access through, through the screen now because these are the, um, this is our use case uh, test bed from Natrus that is the, it's a farm in Girona that is a beef farm with Angus sustainable with some uh, animal welfare standards from welfare quality and also is the farm that um, that we are using as holistic uh, test bed. So in this we could implement already the, the QR code and if you are um, accessing to it you will see the information that we can see from this farm. Uh, the first part is the, the farm is 
is explaining us, I will do it also, is explaining us about uh, where is it, the location, that is information that we see uh, very important because also the consumers doesn't want to get uh, meat from very far away. And also uh, we see which, um, which is the uh, animal, uh, the animal identification. We can identify this animal per animal or per lots. So it would mean that all the, the, the cows that are growing together um, are having this information that is not. Uh, in this case, it's per animal. So we know that it's a um, um, heifer, etc. And um, in, it's growing here. And also we have the details of the farm. So how many grasslands areas has, how many um, uh, fields uh, there are. And, and also this is important because may, maybe the, the, the consumer doesn't know how the, I don't know, the meat system for, uh, works in the, beef, in the beef terms. But in this case, it is important that, the, that we say the proper scientific and that we don't, we don't have to, to, to hide that there are field loads. There are field loads, the animals have to grow in a field loads for having a good grow, a growing period and to produce a good meat. And we also have to put it there. And then uh, we have also the, the maps where the animals are more having more activity or uh, where we register more locations and the information from born where was a uh, growing, where was fit, and then the distribution from the slaughterhouse to, um, to the final um, uh, butcher or that we can send it to the house or in this case to the supermarket. All the, in this case it's a very nice, um, let's see distribution because we see that there is no the field lot is not far away from the farm that is not far away from the from the uh, slaughterhouse mm -hmm. and if we see the um, um, we already test this application in in another in another webinar and we have uh, from the other respondents we have some uh, public authorities, technological companies, agri food industry, so a very uh, kind of diverse, uh, not specific, specified, uh, some from press, some from research universities. And uh, we were asking some willingness to use this kind of uh, traceability. So if there is uh, any lack of information, if the information was not uh, very well, and from the uh, answers that we got, the, the, that is quite, for me, very opti optimistic to, to follow this kind of work, is that the 100, for example, of, of respondents were willing to pay more for an animal welfare product, or even the 93%, that is not bad, is willing to pay more for having information on the, uh, that the, the consumer really means that want to know more and have this information and try to understand and to look it's not very uncommon anymore also um, this was kind of a curiosity that a 66 percent of the respondents would like to know the farmer or talk to him or her in person so this would mean that the qr must have i don't know the links to the social media or to or, or to things like this that we are not implementing, but is something that we have still to research more and to know it really is um, very useful or productive or ethical to know the farmer also. And the 100% also want to include a blockchain and traceability. Uh, we must know that the, the forum we ask in this, uh, blockchain was also um, a knowledge for, for the respondents. So there were no respondents answering that they, did, they didn't know what blockchain is and for what it is used. So we can say it's a high standard technological um, uh, public. Um, it, let's say the, the QR traceability. And also in, the, in terms of um, 
of, of our achievements in the entire project, what we can see is that the, um, uh, we have the blockchain indicators and the blockchain was um, at the end was powered by the IBM food truck. And what we can put in this is that we did the standard animal data models and at least these indicators in the in terms of DPS, uh, animal location, uh, animal grazing, we can already uh, trust that it's a blockchain technology. Also, uh, we have monitored all the test beds in different levels, and this is what I, now our speaker is gonna uh, present more of her um, user witness of the technology and also of how he implemented the technology in the farm of Coba. Um, also, uh, at the end, we did a lot of uh, uh, device installation that is also was a challenge of the project. And we can say that the technology readiness level we get in the project was the expected. Um, also very important to have this consumer interaction that is a is the main goal of the, of the project and that we could have already this QR code that even our Kahoot didn't work very well normally in the surveys that we send by internet. They are working perfectly. Um, uh, just to mention the impact additional action that we implement to the project um, that already Paco described is that uh, regarding we have a high quality sustainable product, product for a big farm. We also have um, IoT monitoring and uh, we also have a blockchain traceability. Uh, we, we wanted to implement this direct market and we are happy that two of our testbeds already implement this, this uh, fa uh, farming uh, and delivery of, of meat. And in this case, I don't have to say now and I think we are running on time and uh, I would like to, uh, uh, to listen to your questions if you have. I really thank you today, uh, your assistance here. I don't know if there are any questions. Can you hear me now, Anna? Yes. Okay, okay. No, because before I was trying to communicate with you during the uh, survey, but uh, you couldn't hear me. I, I think something went uh, wrong because I just was able to to see one of the questions. Uh, so before I was just clicking yes, so completely blind. So maybe maybe it's not so reliable, the answer, but okay. Yes, well, the reliable answers are from the, from <laughs> the survey. Okay. I think uh, in any case, you described uh, very well um, what uh, it has been done during the project and how with uh, um, a few bits of technology, uh, we are able to gather a lot of data that uh, after an analysis can provide very, very useful information and can be a very powerful tool, not just uh, for farmers, but also for, for consumers. And um, last, uh, our last speaker, Javier is uh, very, very relevant. And I think, uh, in fact, this is uh, one of the reasons of, the, of success because all the work that uh, has been done during the project, uh, even though we have uh, very, very good um, minds, very, very good uh, partners in the consortium. Um, however, mm, you need, you need the, the participation, the opinion of uh, a final user. And in this case, Javier is a farmer, is a veterinarian, it's a customer, uh, and it's a final user. So I, I think having the inputs, having this, this um, architecture of, uh, of pro project where use cases, uh, pilot tests, and uh, final users are involved from the very beginning are a guarantee of uh, success. And also um, 
they, they really back uh, that all the the ideas that the engineers, mathematicians, uh, veterinarians uh, may have uh, at the office uh, really, really are validated and provide a useful service for the for the farmers. So um, we just uh, kept your your talk uh, for the end of the of the webinar. Uh, however, we really, really appreciate your contribution, Javier. So the Thank word you. uh, is yours. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Well, hello. I'm going to show the presentation. Let me share my screen. <coughs> I think you are watching it right now. Please, Anna or Carlos, tell me, confirm that you can see the presentation. Yes, we are yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, well, as, as Carlos said, my, my name is, is Javier Martinez. It's, it's very good to, to be in here. Uh, well, as we don't have a lot of time, I think uh, my, my part is going to be 15 minutes or something like that. Uh, let's get this started. First of all, I want to say, Sorry if my pronunciation if not, is not the best, because we are from the south of Spain. And if you may know, <laughs> our pronunciation in here is not very, very well, but I will try to do my best. So, um, well, to, to put you in position at the beginning, well, first of all, I wanted to, to explain to you that I am a, a lucky man who is in the middle of, of everything in this, in this project, because I have had the opportunity to be just in the in the part of the farm and in the other side that is completely related to this that is COVAP that I, I'm going to explain to explain after this. So well as, as a farmer job um, our farm is located in Spain in the south of Spain uh, in the north of Andalusia. I hope you you have the opportunity to come here because well, Spain is really good and Andalusia more more even. <laughs> Uh, well, in, and the farm is in Cordoba, it's in the, as I said, in the north of, of Andalusia. Um, it, it's situated in a, in a region called the Pedroches Valley. And well, here you can see the, the farm that is located in, in a place we call, or in Spain is called uh, the ESA. And here we, we put an image we, we love to show everybody when you know, if if you have not been in in this place or in this place of Spain, because it's it's a place with a wonderful landscape landscape uh, full of of acorn trees and and grass <laughs> in the spring, autumn, autumn and, and winter. Then in summer the everything changes a lot, but <laughs> it is still beautiful. So talking about the farm, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be talking about this quickly. We are located in the Dehesa, as, as I told you, is a, an agro silvopastoral production system. The farm has 210 hectares, and we breed 200 uh, Iberico pigs in the farm. And nowadays we've got 70 beef cows, uh, limos in brief, but we, we want to reach 100 more or less. Uh, we are in, we've got an organic production uh, certificated and with a whole year grazing cows. And we also do some agricultural working uh, with uh, cultivating forage uh, for hay. We, we normally, we normally uh, sow every year oats. Then on the other side, and not less important and completely related to, to the farm, as I told you, uh, I'm, I'm working as a veterinarian in COVAP, that is the, um, the largest farming cooperative in Spain with 4,500 members, active members. Uh, 800 direct employees uh, with, a, with a 473 million billing and we, we develop our work in three areas uh, mainly milk, animal feeding and, and meat. Uh, let me just a second to put this. Well here on the right we, we put some images, uh, it's going to be quick like the animal production on the milk. We, we breed the Holstein cows, uh, goats and sheep. Um, and the meat part with the, the Iberico pigs, the cows and sheep. And then we've got the industry uh, where we, we produce 
produce, sorry, the milk, the meat and, and the animal feed. And as I told you, I'm, I'm in, the, in the innovation department as a veterinarian since 2018. Well, so talking about the project, I, I, once the introduction has been made, uh, I, I wanted to say that it's been a really, really, really good experience to, to be working with this, although we've, we've worked a lot, I would say, <laughs> and I know the part of the farm and the, and the feed lots in Cova. Uh, so, well, we've been, we've been a test bed for two steps of the value chains, the cow, the cow calf farm, as I told you, in the farm, and the feed lot that is, is located in, uh, we've got two in Cobap. And well, we, we have we have had the uni the, the opportunity sorry to to test some really cool and well yeah cool, cool devices and I think that we are in the era where when the, the the technology is rising a lot. So yeah, we have tried the meteorological stations, GPS and activity collars in cows, the um, the Bluetooth low energy like Anna Anna told us just a few minutes ago, uh, tax for calves and, and the smart scales that we've been testing in the in the feed lots that you can see in here. Well, you can see as well the, the picture of the of the base station that are located in the in the farm and some cows with the collars. Um, Paco told me that because we've, we've been not part of this, uh, it, it would be it would be have been really, really nice. Uh, to to be in the in the traceability part with all those tools, but um, I'm not going to talk about this because here in 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 this part of Spain, I think this was tried in Catalonia mostly, but we are uh, we have not worked with this. But well, we will we will look forward to to try it because it's it's really really nice for sure. So. Uh, speaking on the practical part of the of the presentation, uh, we've put uh, three main tools or three main things that we that we find really useful, and those are the the car location, the birding heifers. Where is the, uh, here? The birding heifers, uh, here fencing and, and calving alerts. Uh, I have to say, and, and that was the work for everybody at the beginning that the you know the devices, the application was working, you know, more or less, more or less. But I think with all the inputs that we've been giving from the farm and all the mathematicians, uh, system person, and well, I don't know, everybody from the from the university and the animal have made this possible. And now we we have the opportunity to, for example, here we put a, a, when the when an animal is is giving birth and. Um, from for me to, as a farmer, it's very important for the heifers, the, the cows that are going to give birth, birth for the first time, to know when are they giving birth, because they are the ones who may have some problems or dystophic parts, uh, dystophic birth, sorry. So as you may know, if some of you are veterinarians or know about the behavior, animal behavior, the animal who is going to give birth tends to go away from the herd, and here you can see the animal away, <laughs> sorry, away from the herd. And before giving birth, he, he walks around a lot. So every night when you know that the, it's, com it's coming the, the time when the, when the animals are going to give birth, uh, we, we used to check the, the application every night and we saw uh, that the animals were away from the herd. And the next morning, always, always, uh, at least the last year, we found uh, a calf with the cow. So it's been amazing to, to be able to, to see that. And of course, well, a, a lot of another funny example, like the, the it's been very useful when, when our neighbor, neighbor farm has in heat cows and our bull crossed the, the border. It was really, it was funny, not, not in that moment, but well, we, we got an alert in our phone, in our phone saying that the, the our bull uh, was out of, of the perimeter of the farm. So we had to go and yeah, it was right. The fence was broken and our bull was what with the with the neighbor's cows. So it's it's working really well. And then well Calvin alert are okay detection of Calvin time and site to check the cow and calf are okay. 
because sometimes it helps it to find the calf who is hidden or is sick and has no energy to move. So tracking the, the path that the cow has following, you, we, we were able to find the calf. The calf. And then two more use uh, utilities are the, the main, I mean, the, a lot of meteorological data. But what every farmer in southern Spain want to know is the accumulated rain because here it rains not to, not enough, and and the soil moisture, and then mostly used for decision related to to the sowing time for us. And the other thing, talking about the feedlot, it has been the scales that are working now amazing. It's and we have to say that it's been a an important work we've done. Here we have a, a picture of the first scale that it was a little bit short. So the animal sometimes left the, the back part of the back legs uh, behind or out the scale. So this is the new one that is longer. And where we can we can have the, the, the growth rate to compare feed formulations when we do tests. Uh, to detect suboptimal growth periods, that is very important for us, and to identify low growth rate calves first to, to, to who are the, the first to be slaughtered because they are eating feed and they are not producing what they have to. And um, of course, then the, the calf weight to select the calf with uh, with a lot of feeding customer needs, because now, well, the last year or many times uh, the, the people who work in the field have to, ch have to check the animals and decide more or less how, how the animals wait to send them to the slaughterhouse. So this has been as well really, really useful. So the overall experience, uh, I have to say, it has been very, very, very positive and enriching opportunity for us as a farmer and as a working man from, for this company, for Cobat. Uh, we are uh, leading to, to future collaborations. Uh, then Cobalt has already bought some, some extra scales for the feedlot and we plan to buy more because it's very useful, as I said, to be controlling day to day how the calves are, are, are growing, are win weights. So it's, we've given the check, <laughs> the very green check for this. And yeah, uh, we have also started a collaboration to adapt the GPS devices for the Iberico peaks with, with ER tags. Here you can see the trials we, we are doing. Well, we started the last year with a prototype. I don't know if this is the word in English. But then uh, with the hit animal, we have created a new one that it's working very good. We have to, to develop it more. But well, we will we will try to to track the the Montanera with with Iberico peaks, so it's very different. Um, well, so that would be that would be everything. I want to say thank you as a farmer and as a as a member of Coba, and um, hope you have enjoyed and learned something with this presentation. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you, Javier. Uh, I I also believe that uh, for the rest of the audience has been a very illustrative uh, presentation and uh, once again just to, to thank you because uh, we all know that uh, it's been hard work for, for everyone. Uh, <laughs> a lot of modifications, a lot of iterations, a lot of... <laughs> That, that's the that's the way that that's how yeah. how all the project should should work because we've got a lot of results with all the work we've done everybody. It is great to to not to 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 check uh, how motivated uh, are all the people that has been involved in the in the project. We all know also that uh, we have a lot of work. Uh, to be done, a lot of challenges, but uh, we have made a very, very uh, good progress. Um, uh, things that at the beginning uh, people were very skeptical about, now we know that the work and the potential is uh, really huge. So that, that keeps us uh, pushing to move it uh, forward. Uh, who knows what we'll be able to, to show in a couple of years' time. So I think uh, this, this sector that was very uh, uh, hidden, no? Because most of the efforts in precision livestock farming were 
on the dairy uh, cattle, I, I would say. And uh, there were not so many technologies to be applied on the extensive uh, farming. And uh, we've seen this working on, on cattle. Uh, then uh, we include the lambs on, on sheep on the, on the trial. And now, as you, you show, uh, Hiberian pigs are the next uh, challenge. And they will, by the, by the way, they will also uh, sell uh, somehow the, our national Spanish brand, no? because this is something yeah. very, very typical just uh, from, from Spain. For sure. And uh, also, I think it is remarkable the, the work you, you've done with the scales, because uh, collars have also been a pain mainly from areas like uh, Spain, no? uh, Mediterranean landscapes, uh, but they are not so common maybe in, in, in Europe and in the north of Europe, but uh, fattening is something commonly done in all around the world. So all the efforts and all the results can be applied and can be marketed much more uh, farther away and uh, the, the potential is, is, is really, really, really worldwide. Absolutely. So, we should, I, I we should have one scale in, in every plot of the, of the feedlot. <laughs> that would be the objective. That's the spirit. And I think uh, it's, it's going to be fully justified. For sure. Okay. It, it's, for me, it's been a, a pleasure meeting you all. Uh, there are not so many people uh, in the audience, but I've seen that there are some... Uh, there is a question. So. Yarisa is asking, what is the time for returning investment uh, for the scales, do you think? Uh, okay, yeah. I can, try, I can try to answer if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, uh, Yarisa, uh, hello, and thank you for your, for your question. I, I would like to say that uh, it depends a lot uh, on the actual performance of the feedlot. But uh, if you have um, if you have uh, some problems of heterogeneity within the lots, and you can really decide uh, when to slaughter the animals, uh, depending on the performance of uh, each animal, uh, our simulations uh, uh, make us to think that you can pay the 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 okay. state, sorry in one or two lots, but it, it depends. Uh, if you are uh, not so free to, to, to slaughter the animals at, at a certain um, a wave, you probably will need uh, more, more plots. But uh, you, you must uh, think about that these animals are very valuable because every animal uh, costs a lot of, a lot of uh, euros. So, so saving one animal, is is a lot of a lot of money. If you want to add something, Anna or, or Javier. No, I, I was saying the same. So one to one and a half are the last calculation. So just one year, one uh, and a half years. Maybe Javier, from his experience. Yeah, yeah I think the same. Um, well, it depends of uh, like Paco said uh, on the. On the work that we that you do in your feedlot, but um, for us it was, or it is very, it would be really nice to have one uh, uh, in the what I don't know the name that in English uh, the the name of the of the building where the animals are coming every month to know at, at least the the first two months that is when when the animals have can have some problems like sanitary problems and the scale give you the opportunity to predict this this kind of sanitary problems and to point the focus uh, on the animals that that are sick then when when the animal is uh, it, it is uh, two months uh, in the fattening you don't you don't have these sanitary problems but yeah one, one year and a half i think well two years also, I, I want to, to um, highlight that when we are thinking of the scale as an accessory that, that is going to be um, deployed already in a farm that exists, 
maybe uh, it, it, it makes sense not to 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 think of the 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 effort because also there is a an added work not to adapt the installation itself to the to the scale. Uh, however, if if we think of new fattening farms, no, where you could uh, install the 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 scale and adapt the the architecture of the of the installation itself to the scale, uh, I think uh, Javier or, or Paco, you would agree that uh, if you have to design a new uh, fattening farm from the beginning, you would take it into account and the the, the return of the investment when you are thinking of a huge investment not to to just to 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 build the, the whole the whole farm makes even more sense but it's something that up till now nobody was was uh, willing to do because maybe it, it wasn't uh, exist it, it wasn't available in the, in the market of course the the price of the roof for example which is much higher than the price of the, of the scale. So uh, it is, uh, with the philosophy of, of a low cost sensor, it, this is not a strictly low cost, but this is quite uh, cheap in comparison to other infrastructures of, the, of any feedlot. Okay, no more questions? Well, very nice Thanks. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, before ending the the webinar, I just uh, want want to also remind you that uh, we are looking forward not to see. Uh, how our, the first uh, pioneers, the first uh, farmers are, are getting a lot of success during this uh, Christmas uh, campaign, you know, launching their products uh, to direct sales. So I'm really looking forward because this is like going to be like the, 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 the cake you know, uh, to all this uh, hard uh, work and it's really, really uh, uh, re remarkable, no? How quickly uh, they have also been able to to adapt themselves uh, in order to to achieve with the time schedule, no? With the with the calendar that we fix when we uh, apply for the extension. Uh, so we we thought it was possible, uh, but uh, now we can breathe because <laughs> in a week. Or, or less, we are going to be able to see these products on the on the consumers' uh, side, as we as we agree. Uh, and uh, also, I hope that uh, from now from now, uh, many more uh, farmers will join this uh, trend of uh, being able to to optimize the management, the performance of the farm itself but also being able to transmit all these values to the to the consumer and being able to recover uh, and to add value to their products which is uh, something that the the sector is uh, is demanding and something that is needed if we want to guarantee a successful and a sustainable uh, primary sector so we are we are really 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 happy to contribute uh, to this target uh, and really, really grateful to take part in this uh, IOF uh, 2020 project with uh, all of you guys. And I'm really, really proud of being part of this. I think we are, we are just uh, in a magic uh, moment because we are very, very lucky to have the technological uh, mature moment, you know, the, the, the knowledge and the funding, you not know, just to, to to deliver all these uh, products and services and to have this this amazing chance to, to co make a small contribution uh, to this world. So I, I'm really, really happy. And you should also. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I don't know if, if you want to add something, Paco, Javier. No, just thank you for to all the assistance. And 
Angeles. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much uh, to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye.